Here are the answers to the division and perimeter study guide for unit F. How to find the perimeter of a shape. Well, perimeter means the distance all the way around, so the only way I can go all the way around is I'm going to add all the sides. Down here I have a question. Perimeter is 40. How long is W? So since this is perimeter, I know we're going all the way around. I need to label all of my sides. So I have two sides that are 12 and two that are W. 40 means I had 40 pieces to start with. I've used 12 plus 12, which is 24. I subtract 40 minus 24. Got a little borrowing going on. And I'm now at 16. That's not my answer because I have two W's. So I'm going to take the 16 and divide it by 2. And each of these is going to be 8. Uh, this one down here with the L, I want the perimeter. That means the distance all the way around. So sometimes I look for numbers that add together easily. So like I see a 10 and a 10 is 20. 12 and 13 is 25. And then I have another 25 and another 20. Most important thing is that you make sure that you get all of the sides. And I'm just going to add these up. 5 plus 5 is 10. Carry my 1. 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. The perimeter would be 90. Over here, again, I'm looking for the perimeter. And I'm giving you two of the sides. So make sure you write the other two sides in. And then I'm just going to add 12 plus 12 is... 24. 14 plus 14 is 28. I add them together and I'm at a perimeter of 52. I'm going to scroll up to get to the division problems. All right. We're at 97 divided by 4. I could do box it up or I can do partial quotients. So on this one, I think I'm going to do box it up for you, just so that you can see that on one of the problems. Box it up means I'm dividing up my tens and ones, so I have nine tens and seven ones, and I'm dividing by four. So now I'm trying to find how many fours there are in nine without going over, so I might want to count by fours. Four, eight, twelve. Well, twelve is over, so eight would be two fours, so two times four equals eight. I subtract, I got one, bring it up. I now have 17 in the second box, so I'm going to keep going over here. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. And the largest without going over is 16, which would be 1, 2, 3, 4 boxes. 4 times 4 is 16. I subtract, and I got 1 left. So that means my answer would be 24 R1. Let's try out a partial quotient here. 219 divided by 3. So inside my box, I'm going to have 219. Outside, I'm having 3. And the first thing I would be looking for, can I take 100 threes out? Nope, that's too many. Uh, how about 50 then? So this would be 50 times 3 is 150. I subtract, and I'm now down to 69. So I can't do that again because there's going to be 150 in all. Um, how about 20? 20 times 3 is 60. And then when I subtract, I'm at 9. So now how many 3s in 9? Well, that's easy. That's 3. So 3 times 3 is 9. When I subtract, I'm to 0. And I just add these up. 50 plus 20 plus 3, 73. Let's try another box it up. This time I would have 3 boxes. So I have a 7 and a 3 and a 3. And there's my 5. How many fives and seven without going over? One. One times five is five. I subtract. I got two. Bring it up. Fives and 23. Five, 10, 15, 20. That would be four of them. Gives me 20. And I subtract. And I got three. Bring it up. The third box, I have 33. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. That would be six. Six times five equals 30. And I subtract. And I've got three left, which is allowed because it's less than five. So my answer on the top, my quotient is 146. My remainder is 3. And over here, we're going to try a partial quotient again. So I've got 1,524 divided by 6. So can I do 100? Yeah. So then this would be 100 times 6. That's 600. And I'm now down to 924. I can do it again. 100 times 6 is 600, and I'm now down to 324. 
I cannot do it again, so I know it's less than 100, which means I could use 10, 20, 50, 60, whatever I would like. Well, I know 5 times 6 is 30, which is a little bit less, so I can do 50 times 6, which is going to be 300. And now I'm at 24. Do you know how many 6s are in 24? 6, 12, 18, 24 of them. This one's going to come out even with no remainder. 4 times 6 is 24. I subtract. And when I say even with no remainder, what I really mean is it's going to be a whole number. It's not necessarily an even number. It could also be odd. 100, 200, 254. So that's box it up and partial quotients. You can use whichever one you want. They both work a lot faster than drawing circles and putting tally marks in. All right, scrolling again. Here we go. Match the number to its definition. This will definitely be on the test. There's going to be a problem that looks like this. So what you need to do is know what each of these words means. And I think most people know remainder is the leftover. It comes after the R. So 3 is definitely my remainder. The answer I get when I multiply is the quotient, which is 2. And a good way to remember these is because you got the R right there. What letter comes right before R? M-N-O-P-Q-R. So the Q is right before the R. So we got rid of two of them there, nice and easy. Now the only thing we have left is the divisor and the dividend. Well, the divisor sounds like a person or an animal. The divisors, they're the guys who come and want to eat whatever's in the box. So five is my divisor. And then the only thing left is what's in the box, which is 13. That's my dividend. I try to tell the kids that it's sort of like divinity, the candy, because it's always in the box. But the quotient remainder should help a lot. And then I just have to remember, divisor is coming to eat them. How much fence would you need to go around the field below? Right there, I see the word around. That already tells me this is going to be a perimeter. So I need to get my other numbers in. Besides that, this word should also tell me we're going to go around. I don't remember anybody laying fence down the, the inside of their field. So now that I know what the numbers are, I'm going to add two that are alike. So I got 325 and 325. Zero, one, there's a five. 650. 250 and 250, I think I could do it in my head, but I'm going to go like this just to be sure. 10, carry my 1. Oh, yeah, it's like quarters with an extra zero appended. So now I have 650 plus 500. 0, 5, 11, 1,150 feet. Let's try out these bottom ones. There are eight legs on a spider. If you use pipe cleaners for legs, how many spiders can you make from a bag of 152 pipe cleaners? So you've got the bag here. It's got 152, and you keep pulling out eight pieces at a time. That looks like dividing to me. So I think I'm going to go with partial quotients. How many eights in 152? I definitely can't do 100. I do see that I can do 10 right away, and 10 times 8 is 80, and I'm now down to 72. Um, if you don't know exactly, because it's less than 10, because 10 would be 80, so I know it's less than 10. I would hope some people say, man, this is just a little bit less than 80, so I bet it's 9. 9 times 8 is 72. Subtract, I've got nothing left. Add these together, I can make 19 spiders. If you needed to take like 5 off for 40 and get to 32 and then take another 4 off, that would work also. There's 6 people on a hockey team. If 84 people sign up, how many teams can you make? Again, this looks like a division problem. I'm going to go with box it up this time. So we got an 8 and a 4. And we're dividing by 6. So there's 8 in the first box. How many 6s in 8? 1. 1 times 6 is 6. We got a 2. When we subtract, bring it up. 24. 6s in 24. 6, 12, 18, 24. That would be 4. 4 times 6 is 24. Nothing left. So we can make 14 hockey teams. Last one, a serving of fruit punch is 8 ounces. 
That's about what you get in one of those styrofoam cups. How many servings can you get from a gallon? All right, so the gallon would be having a little, more, a little harder time drawing this one. There we go. Almost. My pen is not writing where I'm wanting it to write again. I just calibrated. So this would be like my gallon. So I'm going to take my gallon and I'm going to pour it into these cups one at a time. So it looks like division again. I'm going to go with partial quotients. 128 divided by 8. And right away I see I could do 10. And 10 times 8 is 80. Subtract. I'm at 48. I can't remember why 8 times something equals 48. But I do know 5. That 5 times 8 is 40. And then when I subtract, I've still got 8 left. Oh, that just leaves one more. 1 times 8 is 8. And I subtract, and there's nothing left. Add these up, 10 plus 5 plus 1. So 16 cups, 16 servings from a gallon. 